Salut and welcome back. In this short video series, I pick several examples of popular French movies that use language as a means of comedy. And I explain why French people find it funny. The first part was about the movie Les Visiteurs, the second one about the TV show Camelot, and today we are talking about the movie La Haine. If you'd like to stay updated on our videos, please remember to subscribe by clicking on the button below. Now, before we get started, you might be wondering why am I putting La Haine, a black and white drama or crime movie from 1995 about riots in the suburbs and police violence in this comedy series. Well, it's true that La Haine goes over 24 hours in the lives of three young men in the Parisian suburbs following a violent riot because a police officer shot one of their friends. It's also true that the movie focuses on one of these men who found a gun and is seeking revenge. But the director, Mathieu Kassovitz, actually explained in an interview that he wrote it as a comedy on purpose. This does not detract from the importance of the subject and how horrible some of the scenes can be. If you watch this movie, you will see, like I did as a teenager, that a lot of the focus is on how the three young men from the suburbs are always joking and bantering, albeit in a quite crass manner most of the time. This was the 90s, before memes on the internet were a thing, but trust me that a lot of the sentences in this movie were common jokes to repeat when you were with your friends. Now, the reason Mathieu Kassovitz wrote it as a comedy is, and I quote, La haine was a success because it's a comedy. When I hang out with these guys in the projects or in Paris, whether you're hungry or not, it's all about making jokes. I wanted people from Paris to see that these guys are darn educated. Yeah, they talk like that, but they make jokes. So if you'd like to read the whole interview, I'm adding a link uh, to that in the description below. But to sum this up, Mathieu Kassovitz wanted to show these men as they are in real life. Friends who are trapped and running in terrible situations, sometimes making the wrong choices, but mostly full of anger against society while still having fun like any group of friends would do. Here's an example. The movie actually starts with a joke. As the first shot of Earth from outer space fades in, you hear a voiceover saying « C'est l'histoire d'un homme qui tombe d'un immeuble de 50 étages. » Le mec, au fur et à mesure de sa chute, il se répète sans cesse pour se rassurer. « Jusqu'ici tout va bien. »« Jusqu'ici tout va bien. »« Jusqu'ici tout va bien. » Mais l'important, c'est pas la chute. C'est l'atterrissage. What this means is This is the story of a man who falls from a 50-story building. The man, as he falls, keeps repeating to himself to reassure himself, so far so good, so far so good, so far so good. But the important thing is not the fall, it's the landing. Now, I'm not going to spoil the movie, but while this sounds like a joke, it's actually a parallel to society. To the director, Mathieu Kassovitz, it's society that is falling from a 50-story building, and we are the one who keep on saying, so far, so good. The director also uses a lot of ways to show the separation between Paris and its suburbs. For example, all the shots in the projects are quite wide, and they have what we call a deep depth of field. What this means is that you see everyone and everything in the background, not only the main actors. But, as soon as they make their way inside Paris, sorry for the tiny spoiler, everything is shot in close-ups or medium shots with a very shallow depth of field. This means that all the shots in Paris, apart from one here and there, actually render the beautiful Parisian architecture blurry and inimportant. This also shows how these men, as soon as they step into Paris, are scrutinized by everyone. But I digress, and the purpose of this video is not to analyze the great work of the director, but to talk about a specific extract that is funny, and also about the language. After all, this is a French class video. So I mentioned before that the director said in an interview, they talk like that, but they make jokes. What he meant by like that is that first, they use a lot of verlan. And second, they use a lot of full language. Now, about that second point, I picked a short extract that doesn't really use that kind of language, so don't worry. 
Now, about the first bit, the Verlan slang. I need to explain how it works because there's some in our extract. First, to give you the gist of it, Verlan is taking the syllables of a word and putting them back to front. Even the actual word Verlan is the inversion of the two syllables in the word l'envers, which means back to front. Of course, it's more complicated than that. With time, there's even double inversions, elisions, truncations, and the adding or removing of vowels. It's complicated. So I think it's actually easier to learn the words themselves. But first, we need to talk about the history behind this odd slang. The Verlan slang actually has a very long history. You can find traces of it in the Middle Ages, and it got bigger in the 19th century and then during World War II. It was mostly developed as a coded language in the popular neighborhood, but it quickly became a common form of communication in the suburbs that spread all over France, and especially in the 90s. In the 90s, people kept making up new words or overly switching words around. What ended up happening is that a lot of these words ended up sticking, while others are not really used anymore. For example, you might have heard the word un cum or une meuf. This means a guy and a girl. Cum is literally the word mec turned around, and meuf is the word femme turned around. I invite you to click on the French Wikipedia link below that will take you directly to the example table of current Verlan words in use that show you the original word and its Verlan counterpart. But it's time now to get to our extract from the movie La Haine. First, let's introduce the characters. La Haine revolves around three young men. Hubert, played by Hubert Koundé, a French Beninese actor, Saïd, played by Saïd Tagmawi, a French-American and Moroccan actor, and Vince, played by Vincent Cassel, a French actor you may have seen here in the HBO TV show Westworld. Our extract only features Saïd and Vince. In this extract, Vince is going to give Saïd a buzz cut because... Um, how do I put this? He wants to meet women. <laughs> Anyhow, while Vince is cutting Saïd's hair, they're talking about what Vince will do with the gun he found if their friend who got shot by the police, Abdel, dies. Vince implies that he will restore the balance by shooting a police officer. But while the discussion is quite serious, they make jokes. And when Vince accidentally nicks Saïd's hair, the banter explodes into a comedic scene where Vince tries to tell him that he didn't really nick his hair and that, oh, you know, the hole in his hair actually looks pretty nice. <laughs> anyway, enough with me spoiling the scene, let's watch it together. This extract is about one minute long and it's pretty fast. I'll explain the jokes and subtleties of the language that make this scene even funnier to French people after we watch it. But remember to pay attention to the English subtitles. I put the French ones too, but I'll be honest, it's very advanced and fast slang, so you might be lost. So please read the English subtitles to get the gist of it, and I'll explain it all after. All right, let's watch it. Bouge pas, je te dis. Et tu vas vraiment tuer un keuf si Abdel y meurt. Et alors, qu'est-ce que tu crois Tu veux être le prochain robot à te refumer dans un commissariat Non. Ah bah alors, tu crois quoi Moi non plus. Toi non plus, tu veux pas être le prochain robot de faire fumer dans un commissariat Exactement, tu crois quoi Les mecs, ils croient qu'on gaulerie, tu vois. Mais moi, sans déconner, ça y est, je te dis la vérité, je gaulerie pas, quoi. Bah ouais, ouais. Et doucement, 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 c'est bon, c'est bon. Doucement. Ils ont pas d'avoir des, des, des calibres aussi gros, c'est pas, c'est pas, qu'est-ce que t'as fait, là Rien, je te jure, sur la tête de ma mère, ça va, ça va, ça va. Quoi, quoi rien, Sur la tête de ta mère, quoi Pourquoi ouais, tu jures de... Pourquoi tu jures Je jure parce que je te dis, y'a rien. Et voilà. là, il fait froid, là, pourquoi, pourquoi il fait froid, là Mais parce qu'il fait froid, c'est rien, ça, c'est parce qu'il fait froid ici, c'est tout. Quoi, il fait froid ici Mais voilà, ça va. Écoute, écoute-moi, sans déconner, je te dis, moi, je vais égaliser et ça va, ça c'est rien. Et Rachida, bon, arrête Vas-y, fais voir, fais-moi voir. Vas-y, fais-moi voir. Putain, sans déconner, la confiance, hein, voilà. Tu vois tu Quoi T'as rien fait, là, fais voir Vas-y, tu vois, tu vois pas, tu t'es pas, si Mais j'ai rien vu, là Mais fais-moi confiance, moi. Mais quoi, t'as fait ma confiance, quoi Qu'est-ce qu'il a Il est beau, le trou. Mais pourquoi il fait pas un trou, d'abord Pourquoi il fait froid, là C'est rien, je te dis, tu me fais pas confiance, t'es relou, sans Moi, je te coupe pas ta cheveux, hein. Ok. So first, there was a very funny joke. While the context was terrible and not funny, Said asks Vince if he's really going to shoot a police officer if their friend who's in the hospital dies. We immediately get a joke. <laughs> Vince asks Said, do you want to be the next Arab to get shot in a police station? 
And then he says, me neither. <laughs> now, Vince, being a white Jewish man, this makes Said laugh and repeat, oh yeah, you don't want to be the next Arab to get shot in a police station? To basically make fun of him. <coughs> now, you will notice that the word for Arab is rebeu. This is the Verlan slang for the word. As I said, they use a lot of Verlan in this movie. So every time they use one, I'll highlight it. Another Verlan word Vince uses shortly after is gollery. Gollery is the Verlan for rigoler or to laugh. He says, les mecs, ils croient qu'on gollerie, tu vois. Mais moi, sans déconner, ça, je te dis la vérité, je gollerie pas. <laughs> One thing you may spot is that when using a verb in Verlan, usually it's not conjugated. I know this sounds easier, but please don't start using Verlon for this reason. <laughs> Then we get to when Vince nicks Said's hair. Now, this is pretty straightforward. Vince accidentally cuts a hole in his hair, and Said can feel it. He keeps saying, why is it cold here? <laughs> and Vince tries to explain that it's because it's cold in his apartment. He then swears on his mother's head, which prompts Said to ask, why are you swearing? Because if nothing happened, he wouldn't have to swear. <laughs> Then Said asks him to show him what happened with a mirror, but Vince just skips it really fast, telling Said to just trust him, he will be fine. Of course, Said is quite distressed about his hair. I think I would be too if I felt the buzzer just shave my hair. But before we get to the last joke, you might have noticed another use of Verlan where he tells him, you're not looking. But he says, tu t'aimas pas. Téma is the Verlan of the verb mater which is already a slang word for to look at something. Again here, it's not conjugated, just the word for the verb. Finally, Vince proceeds to try to tell Said, il est beau le trou, <laughs> to try to calm him down. Basically acknowledging that he made a hole in his hair, but it looks good. <laughs> Without spoiling anything, in the next scene, he tries to apologize to him while also laughing at how bad his hair looks and tells him, It's the trend in New York, everybody wears their hair like that. <laughs> This sentence actually became a meme in the 90s, where every time someone did something ugly or badly, people would say, c'est la mode à New York, meaning it's trendy in New York. Anyhow, I want to focus on the very last sentence in this dialogue. Did you hear Vince saying, tu me fais pas confiance, ça y est, t'es relou sans deck. Moi, je te coupe pas ta cheveux. Hein. Here, we would have the word relou, which is the verlan for lourd, meaning heavy. This actually means someone or something that is annoying or tiresome. So when Vince says, t'es relou, he means you're tiresome. But does the end of the sentence, je te coupe pas ta cheveux, sounds right to you? This is actually a grammar mistake, because as you know, or at least I hope you know by now, hair in French is plural. We say, les cheveux, not la cheveux. And even if we wanted to have one hair in French, as in one piece of hair, it would actually be masculine, as in le cheveu. I'm not really sure how this happened in the movie. If this was scripted or came out like that ad lib, after all, they're arguing so fast that maybe the actor really made that mistake. But regardless, it sounds really funny. I still to this day say this sometimes to friends about cutting hair. For example, je me suis coupé la cheveux, to say I cut my hair. Now, this is very wrong grammatically, but it's funny to French people. It would be like saying I cut my hair or something like that. It's pretty much impossible to translate, but as I said, obvious bad grammar can be funny to us. So keep that in mind. All right, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you have questions, please post them in the comments. And also, if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give us a thumb up by liking this video. Next time, I will talk to you about the movie OSS 117. OSS 117 is a spoof of James Bond, to sum it up in one sentence, and it used to be a book series which led to an old movie series. But we will focus on one of the three movies that were more recently released when the series was relaunched, starring the French actor Jean Dujardin as OSS 117. We will watch an extract from Le Caire ni d'Espion, where you will quickly get that most of the jokes revolve around the fact that OSS 117 is a super French spy who is somehow quite rude and a bit of an idiot. 
Anyhow, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Salut!